house is a structure like a small house covered with either plastic sheet or fiberglass. It allows control of environmental factors that if left uncontrolled affects the crops. These factors include temperature, moisture or humidity, amount of light, air movement, pests and diseases. Greenhouse technology provides the opportunity for the farmer to grow crops in the garden all year round and to harvest produce regardless of the season. The advantages of a greenhouse are Increase in agricultural output thus increases the farmer's income. Very little water is used on irrigation. It improves food security as the farmer produces in all seasons. Reduces crop pests and diseases. Allows the farmer to grow crops that are not suited in the region due to climate modification. Requires less labor as weeds are controlled by targeted watering through drip irrigation. Oftentimes, farmers are discouraged or forced to abandon their farms due to harsh weather conditions. Well, not anymore. AIM Global Company Limited, in partnership with Greener Earth Technologies, have come up with a greenhouse kit that is an all-inclusive farming unit for farmers. The company also provides dam liners for water harvesting, fish pond liners for fish farming and other better farming technologies including beekeeping, poultry production, irrigation, improved farming input certified seeds, installation of open field irrigation and other technical agronomic support to farmers on how to grow and manage different types of crops using these technologies. There are two different types of greenhouses. Tunnel greenhouse, which is fully covered and best suited for cold areas such as on the mountainous regions, and vented greenhouse, recommended for dry areas like coastal areas because of its ability to provide sufficient air circulation. The greenhouse kit comes in different sizes depending on the farmer's size of land and ability of the farmer to afford. Superstructure is the main structure made of galvanized steel frames and traces. It is covered by a plastic sheet on the top and by a fine net on the sides. To install an 8 meters by 30 meters superstructure, you will need these materials. Three bags of cement, crushed stones or aggregates, river sand, generator for power or current, a drill machine, wooden pegs, digger, hammer or mallet for pegging, truss, plastic cover, cutlass or machete, and wire lock. first step is to take measurements of the four corners. This is the most crucial step and any failure at this stage will affect the shape and strength of the greenhouse. We have to use three, four, five method. Then you have to take four, four meters. Then you have to take uh, five meters. Ensure that the corners are all squared up before checking the diagonals. The measurements must be precise. Use a digger to dig holes at exactly same levels before setting the ground posts along the sides. Add a mixture of concrete or crushed stones and mortar onto the holes to make it stiff and rigid to withstand strong winds.
The structure detail in the particular side height is very important. Greenhouses with very low sides make it hard for the farmer to grow crops such as cucumber or tomatoes that climb high since there will not be enough room for crops to grow upwards. There will also be limited space for working. The truss comes with crop support crossing from one side to the other. The crop support is for assisting plants like tomatoes with weak stems to grow upwards. To ensure the strength and durability of the greenhouse, fix arcs together with a professional metallic skeleton to endure strong winds. The poles will end with a slit in order to strongly hold on to the foundation concrete. Once the frame is up and looking good, the intricate process of fitting the plastic cover begins. The gables are the first to be covered. Then cover the side walls with the net. The net assists in ventilation to balance temperatures according to weather patterns. After the side net is up, fit in the curtains. This is a side plastic cover used to control water from penetrating from the side net during heavy rainstorms. This cover can be lowered at night or cold seasons to maintain the required greenhouse effect and rolled up when hot as appropriate. The plastic cover is carefully tucked using a wiggle wire. These wires hold the entire plastic cover on the greenhouse tightly and firmly. Carefully tuck them in and then move it back and forth with both hands trying not to rub on the plastic to avoid tearing the plastic sheet. The plastic cover should be neither too tight nor too loose. The plastic goes right into the ground and is covered by soil. When the walls are done, cover the rafter with the plastic sheet. The vent, however, is covered with a net to allow flow of hot air from the top of the greenhouse. In cases where there are many greenhouses built together like this ones, a gutter is recommended to collect water when it rains. This water is stored and may be used for irrigation, watering animals or for a fish pond. The pouch is part of the superstructure, usually installed at the entrance. The pouch could be used for raising nurseries holding produce or keeping tools. A foot bath is dug at the porch entrance and filled with a well-mixed disinfectant. This helps to prevent the garden area from diseases and infection that may be brought by by people entering into the greenhouse. A lockable door made of metallic frame is fixed at the entrance to maintain the needed humidity and temperature and keep away unwanted entrants such as livestock and passers-by. When all plastic cover has been fitted, carefully trim any hanging edges using scissors. The structure is now complete. If you follow all the steps correctly, the greenhouse will be able to withstand wind speeds of more than 120 km per hour. Drip irrigation is a modern method of irrigation. 
which regulates water usage, limits any chance of crop attached by waterborne diseases such as nematodes and limits weed growth as water drops are directly exactly to the plant root area. Materials and tools needed to set up a drip irrigation system are a steel tank stand, water tank of 500 to 1000 liters made of plastic or collapsible material, filter, PE pipes, drip pipes and fittings. A well-designed drip irrigation system reduces losses practically. Conditions are less favorable for crop diseases to infest or spread. Irrigation scheduling can be managed precisely to meet crop water needs. Since only the crop root zone is irrigated, nitrogen already in the soil is less subject to leaching losses and applied fertilizer can be used more efficiently. Drip irrigation has the flexibility to be used in the greenhouse or on open field. This is another method of growing crop. Not necessarily you grow vegetables in a greenhouse, you can grow through an open field, eh? through the drip rain. If the water comes from the tank, through the gravity, you can grow spinach, kids, maize, eh? all kind of crop. Most crops can be grown in the greenhouse. However, delicate crops are more prone to pests and diseases such as tomatoes, onions, cucumber, capsicum, broccoli, cauliflower and lettuce which do very well in a greenhouse. Any other field crops including open pollinated varieties, corn, beans and some vegetables like cabbage, collard green, pep and bitter ball, which are more resistant, do well under open field irrigation. A nursery is a temporary place for small plants or seedlings to be grown and provided with good nutrition before transplanting. A well-established nursery will result to healthy seedlings which guarantees the farmer, fast growth of the seedlings, ease selection of healthy seedlings to be transplanted while weaker ones are given more time to grow stronger. Things needed to set up a nursery are Cocoa peat husk This is a mixture of organic manure with grinded coconut husks Seeds of the selected crop Nursery trays Fertilizers Knapsack sprayer for water Take your trays Just fill it like that you can place it, place it a bit. The next thing eh, is planting. Take your seeds one by one. Eh. The next step, you do your covering. Stay with the cocoa pit. Cover it that way. You need to keep it, your nurse to set and your nursery in a raised table to avoid your trees getting or your seeds getting contaminated with the soil and also to avoid pests. Also, it's important so that when your seed produces the taproot, it won't get to the soil. So that so it will be easier for you to uproot your seed. Eh? and take him to your farm. A knapsack sprayer is best suited for irrigating seedlings in the nursery because it emits little water and does not splash the media. Spray a lot of water in the beginning until it starts draining at the bottom holes of the tray. Watering should be done in moderation. A lot of water will make the seeds rot and they will not germinate. The purpose of covering the your, your nursery with the polythene bag is to build a lot of humid and a lot of temperatures. 
so that you, the germination can take is place very fast. As you can see, our seeds has already germinated. What you need, you need the fertilizer to establish the roots. We have different types of sata fertilizer depending with the crop you are feeding. Take your measuring cylinder and put this, for instance, this pump has 16 liters and we are going to put that two grams. This fertilizer is soluble, soluble. It's, it's going to be absorbed by water. This is how you mix your fertilizer. As you can see, the fertilizer has started draining from the bottom of the trees. But that's, it, that shows you, you have given your crop enough of fertilizer. And also make sure you don't do it in the, during daytime or when it's hot. Fertilizer has a lot of acid. It's going to burn the, the leaves of the crop. After seven days, you start, where, this is where you start your agro, on agronomic practices. It's also at this stage where you start introducing your crop into another harsh condition or to a new environment by opening the curtains yeah, to allow free air circulation, the reducing the humidity inside the, the greenhouse. The seedlings are ready for transplanting at around 28 days. A day before transplanting, the seedlings should not be watered. This is to harden the seedling in preparation for a more harsh condition. Transplanting is the process of relocating the healthy and well-grown seedlings from the nursery to the garden. To prepare land for transplanting, you will need well-germinated healthy seedlings, hoe, rake, DAP fertilizer, elastic or plastic hand gloves, organic manure, direct watering or water through drip irrigation. Using a hoe, dig the soil to a depth of 60 centimeters. Repeat and ensure the soil is turned severally to make it into a fine tilt from the soil lumps. This will create a conducive space for the crop to develop its root system in a soft aerated environment. The next step is to shape the beds. Spread manure all over the seed bed. Drip lines are then aligned parallel to each other. The space between the drip lines should be 40 centimeters. The drip pipes have holes that emit water at intervals of 30 centimeters. This is the average spacing for most of the crops. Before transplanting, put enough water in the seed bed for at least 30 to 40 minutes. Using a sharp tool such as a trowel or blunt cutlass, dig holes of 40 centimeters apart and 4 to 5 centimeters deep. Add DAP fertilizer, 10 grams per hole, and gently mix with soil using cutlass. This is to avoid burning of the roots. The next step, okay, you take your tray. Take out one seedling and check the root system. A well-developed root system covering the whole media should be achieved. Lift the seedlings from the nursery tray into the plant hole and cover the seedlings with soil pressing it gently around the root area to farm the seedlings on the ground. Once transplanting is complete, the monitoring process and agronomic practices begin. Watering should be done twice a day for the first seven days. Temperatures should be regulated during the day and when it's hot. On average, a temperature of 23 degrees centigrade is recommended. Fertilizer application starts one month of transplanting. Starter fertilizers DAP applied. Apply CAN fertilizers to replenish essential nitrogen nutrients two months into transplanting. 
NPK fertilizer top dressing is added around the same time. This is done continuously twice a week after every 14 days. During this period, all lifts below mature ripening fruit should be removed. This is referred to as defoliation and should be done continuously. With improved ventilation, leaves diseases will be avoided. Continue with these practices until the crop is well established. Welcome to Machakos County Women Prison in Eastern Kenya. This is a semi-arid area where food crops are hard to grow due to frequent drought and constant lack of water. With a kind donation of a greenhouse from well wishers, including Greener Earth Technology and AIM Global Limited, these ladies have embraced greenhouse technology. Tucked behind their humble abode prison compound stands an 8 meter by 30 meter greenhouse, fully operated by its temporary guests, the young female prisoners, as they learn a new skill they could use to produce their own food after they are discharged from prison. These ones are two and a half months old and a lot has been made like watering, top dressing, spraying yeah? and also pruning, weeding. Yeah? Now first thing, being, the first thing on application what you need to do is you need, have to put water first before you do your top dressing. One kg of NPK goes for one bed and what do you do, you just using the groves, eh? pick the fertilizer, one, one kg fertilizer, then you, broad, you broadcast eh? in between the bed. Take a mixing stick, eh? then you mix the fertilizer and the soil. After application of the fertilizer, you increase the the time, the watering time. Previously, we were putting twice a day for 20, 30, 30 minutes. Now here you are going to put for 30, from 30 to 40 minutes so that you can leach the fertilizers. Pruning is one of the most important agronomic practices for plants in a greenhouse. It helps to reduce the number of leaves, availing more nutrients which result to healthy, strong and more productive crops. Once tomatoes have grown to touch the top wire, trellising is done. It improves production and increases usable space. It also prevents the harvest, particularly tomatoes, from rotting. The lower knot is untied to loosen the string of the first row. It is then tied to the next crop knot after carefully moving the string together with the crop. Move and tie the lower knot of the string next to the inside of the following plant. This step is repeated every time the crop touches the top wire of the crop support. Tomatoes cannot grow beyond a certain height of around 7 to 8 feet. Mulching is another beneficial practice for better crop health and vigor. Mulches are materials of organic nature such as dry leaves or grass placed over soil surface to maintain moisture and improve soil conditions. Meet Lydia, a 20-year-old inmate. Based on her positive interest, she has demonstrated working on the prison greenhouse AIM Global Limited and Greener Earth Technologies have offered to grant her employment opportunity in one of the company's greenhouse farms. This will help her to generate income and maximize use of her skills as part of her reintegration after the rehabilitation term in prison. I've learned a lot from this project. I've learned how to maintain such a greenhouse. Before I came here, I didn't know how to manage it. But now, I can manage it. I can even start such a project for myself because I've learned a lot. I've learned how to irrigate, how to, to prune, how to apply the chemicals when they are needed. Once the inmates come in, the greenhouse has turned out to be one of the uh, major places where we can actually rehabilitate the prisoners. 
through providing the skills, they learn as they con they learn on the job. As they continue with the uh, uh, taking care of the greenhouse, they are able to learn skills that they can be able to use even when they are out there, either to be employed in greenhouses out there, or uh, they can put up their own greenhouses once they are able to get the capital. Whatever small uh, we uh, products that we have, we are using them or we are utilizing the funds. Uh, the staff are making use of the tomatoes, uh, of course, the, the products have come closer to the members of staff. Uh, we are putting in a few in the, in the meal for the inmates and we are also getting some uh, revenue. These tomatoes are now ready for the market. I, I, I.